be here with us, I'll be with you. Oh, hello there, and welcome. Well, what is a bifold or a trifold or a quadfold shutter? And how do you go about it? Well, before we get into that, if you're most kind and click like and subscribe, it'd be very much appreciated. And maybe the little bell icon, because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Yes, um, why would you have a bifold or a trifold or a quadfold shutter? Now, there's a couple of main reasons for that. One is you might want your shutters to um, open right into your reveal. Neatly into reveal, just tucked out of the way. Generally speaking, that we quite often use um, that for like uh, uh, louvered shutters, what have you, and also um, Douglas fir and chestnut shutters here in France, where they're quite thin. Now, the most common shutter in France would be with the, like the Palisade type shutter, where, for instance, you've got the Volet Lambs, and that's what these are. These are Volet Lamb shutter boards. And Volet Lamb is basically Volet is shutter and Lamb is blade. So basically, they're shutter blades. On France. So um, when we look at the, this this board here, as you can see here, this is a Volley Lamb board, and they're quite good, really, because they're ideal for um, for the for shutters and what have you, because of the, the the actual tongue groove is actually relatively loose, so it allows the boards to move, you know, expand and contract. Well, the problem with a bifold or a trifold shutter is, is when they fold up, they become thicker. So and because they become thicker, they become heavier. But you. How many folds you're going to need is all going to depend on how much room you've got for your shutter. Now, if it's going to be folding back into the reveal, you're going to need quite narrow blades, you know, quite narrow folds. And if they're that narrow, the more you get, the thicker it's going to become. Because this is three pieces of Voli Lamb board, and yeah, that's that's already quite thick, and in the closed, so in the open position, they're going to be blocking light out your windows. So this type of shutter, which I've, I'm making here, which is a door shutter, and that is a trifold. And the reason for it being a trifold in this instance is the job that is going on. There's a balcony, so you you open up a set of French doors, you you wander outside, and there's a balcony. The problem is the handrail, the position of the balcony on one side of the wind of the door doesn't allow any room whatsoever to open the shutter to. So what do you do? Now, we've got a little bit of room, but not a lot. So, so what, we, what we're doing here is we are using um, a trifold shutter that I'm making. So when it's in the open position, it can be folded up and tucked out of the way and not obscuring the light coming into the um, actual room. But the if you did have an open shutter, the other option would be obviously to open it and have it open constantly or permanently up against the actual handrail for the um, balcony. Well, one thing that's got God done awful, another thing is it's going to be, well, it's going to keep getting hit by the wind and all sorts of stuff. And it's just not what the customer wants, and I don't blame him either. So normally when I'm doing my Legend Brace style shutters, um, there's, an, there's extra thickness because you have the ledge, you know, the rail on the back, which makes that Z shape, the ledge and brace. Now, that, that's that's absolutely fine for most shutters, but with bifold, trifold shutters, it doesn't work. The reason why it, it doesn't work is because there's no room. Now, what instead of being three pieces of wood, it'll end up being six pieces of wood. Yeah, because every single one of them blades here, or folds, would end up having an additional piece of wood, uh, as in the ledge. Now, that's, that's all very well, but you're going to have this mass of wood hanging there, sticking out for blocking your light and what have you so it's just it's just really really untidy so this particular job i'm going to be using my domino dowler my df 700 with the 14 mil dominoes to actually mortise and ten loose ten all these together so i end up with three separate folds or blades now the traditional way of doing that in france is they quite often would use a chisel so a uh, chain mortiser to create a slot all the way through the edge of each of these boards and pass a piece of timber through and then a couple of little stop, um, stop pegs and that's you know to secure it all together and that's fine and, and a door this size because um, it's going to be about that long it would have about four of those loose tendons going right right through now i'm using my domino dial because i got it and it's quick and i don't have a chain mortiser um I have done it that way in the past using my um, hollow chisel mortiser 
but it just takes so long. Because the length of the actual chisel and the width of these boards, you have to actually go all the way through each individual board, and it's just the boards, and obviously each mortise has to be lined up. And it was just, just took too long, it's just so much quicker with the, um, with the fence tool, and the, the end result is pretty much the same. Yeah, they, yeah, as long as you're not going too wide, it's absolutely fine. So that, that works really well. Now what you've got to remember is a lot of the rigidity in these shirts is provided by the hinges themselves. And in this case, you should be using something like this, this type of hinge, which is a strap hinge and the pin towel, which goes into the wall. Yeah, but you might need to fabricate your hinges to suit whatever um, width shutter you're doing and how many blades you've got. In France, there are um, specific hinges to allow you to do that. So you have a hinge like that, but you need to have a little short hinge. You cut these to length and that gets bolted over the top of two straps and you basically do, you, you can manipulate that to go. I tend to, to be absolutely honest, I make my own up and I just get my old welder out and just weld them up to suit so they're the right size. And it works really well. And give me a cut of paint again, obviously. So this is the type of hinge. Don't be tempted with these old things. You know, I know they're cheap, but they look rubbish. And these aren't that much more expensive anyway. You know, but they, they just don't last. They really just do not last. And they don't like, um, what you remember about the shutters is they tend to sit there for long periods of time not getting used in the open position. And with something like this, when it comes to you want to use it, you're going to find it's going to be rusted up inside and it'll be getting really, really stiff. A bit like me, all rusted up and stiff inside. Yeah. Now, when I'm doing this, like I say, this example, I made this little um, model for you, just to give you an idea to show you what, basically what would happen. So we would have this hair would be the actual, oh, I think that's been the shutter, a section through the, the shutter itself, the, the whole shutter. And the idea is you'll have, I've got the wrong way around, I think. Have I got the wrong way around? Or that way around? Yeah, that way around. So I'm looking from the inside now. That is in the closed position on the actual um, reveal. And if I want to um, open it, I would then pretty much just do that. And then put a few bolts in to hold it into place, you know, shoot bolts. Now, that works really, really well. But you can do it where you're folding um, kind of back on itself, but this, not back on itself, onto itself, but this actually works much nicer and it's neater because you get the three piece of wood and they end up being relatively close together. So you've got the three shots in, a lot neater, a lot closer. You will have, um, on the inside here, you're going to have your um, iron mongery. In this case, it's going to have a three point fixing and that, you don't want that getting obstructed. You've got to be careful what way around you do it regarding actually closing the shutter, opening and closing the shutter, because you don't want that end up getting trapped in between. And then you've got, instead of it looking sort of like that, oh, here we go. oh no, what's happened? Someone's turned the lights out. Magic. <laughs> you don't want a situation where you've got one, one blade out like so. So you've got to bear that in mind when, you, when you're working out how you're going to do your bifolds. I've done loads of these now, and they all pretty much turn out absolutely fine. So you're going to need rebates. A loose rebate, not tight rebate, because you want some room for it to breathe. And when it lines up, you don't want, if there's any kind of like movement in your boards, say for instance, in the weather, they've got a little bit of a bend in them or something, you want to make sure they still line up. So you make sure that your actual um, your uh, rebates are loose enough to allow for that. As you can see, that was, that was quite loose. I just, 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 I just mopped this up on the, you know, on the DeWalt Rotary Arm Saw. But when you cut the rebates out, you've got a couple of options. You could use a router, you know, and just router and do your guide for your router and, and, and do your rebates that way. But all I've done is I just use, I just use my table saw. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't have a riving knife on my table saw. I know people swear at me about it and I don't blame them because it's dangerous. Um, but I do, because my table saw does not lend itself to doing blind cuts because of, with, with a riving knife, because it's got such a stupid riving knife on it, it doesn't move with the actual blade, it doesn't go up and down with the blade, it's a fixed one. Absolutely ridiculous. So I had to remove it. I'm trying to come up with a solution to actually um, solve that problem, but I'll, I'll, when that be, I don't know at the moment. Sooner rather than later, I hope. So we've got to have rebates. So as you can see here, we have one piece of wood here with a rebate in, and then we have a rebate on the opposite side here. So one board sits over the top, of the other and the reason why we have these rebates is it prevents line of sight and also drafts and stuff like that coming through your shutters or well, helps to anyway so one of the reasons you'd have shutters is to security visual security you don't want people peering in when you go you know through the gaps in your shutters when you go 
away on holiday. Now, let's say I cut them on the table saw and then I just cleaned them up with this badger plane here, your shoulder plane, just a couple of swipes and that takes off any splinters that caused through the actual table saw. The other thing you could do, which is good enough for this job, you could change the blade in your table saw just for this purpose with an 80 tooth blade. If you've got a 250 mil, you know, 10 inch table saw, just swap the blade over for an 80, 80 tooth and the cut will be much, much finer. Because at the moment I've only got a ripping blade um, it's not even the general purpose, about a 30 tooth blade in my table saw at the moment. So it does fluff the wood up a little bit. But I don't mind because I can just clean it up with that. So, yeah, so the main things to think about when you're doing your uh, bifold or trifold or quadfold shutters is the complete thickness is the room for the shutter when it's actually folded up. Have you got um, decent walls around your window or door to allow you to fix? your pin tail. Now how I do it is I basically create a slightly bigger hole than what the actual pin tail is and I use chemical fix. It's like a polyester resin which has got an aggregate in it and it comes in a mastic tube and you squeeze it into the hole, you plonk that into the hole and it goes off and it's rigid. So that, that's pretty much what, how I do it anyway. And it's quite a common way to do it in France um, because we have a lot of old stone walls and uh, yeah if you try to put raw plug in them it just doesn't work because it's just all clay. You know, yeah, so it doesn't work at all. You have these all big old hard stones and in between is clay. So that doesn't, yeah, it's not a great idea. So anyway, so that is how I consider my trifold or bifold or quadfold shutters. And you can see how it works. It's quite a simple thing, really. The hardest thing for you is to make sure that they all end up being the same length. So when, when they are in the closed position, you don't really want one sticking out here and one sticking out there, and it just looks completely out of mess. So you've got to work, work it out, and you do that with obviously with the original measurements of the width of the shutter that requires to be. And if you've got one shutter that needs to be um, a bifold or trifold, and the other one can be a full shutter, well then make the trifold first, because it could, might dictate the width of your full shutter. Anyway, that's my little video on my bifold trifold shutters. And like I say, if you must kind of click like and a subscribe. And I hope this little microphone is working a little bit better. Because um, before I was using the um, oh, little shotgun mic, but when I was walking about, moving about and stuff, I was finding that it was just, um, well, one minute the volume's up there, next minute's down there, and also my squeaky old voice. It's not very pleasant anyway, is it? So thank you for watching, most kind. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and maybe the little bell icon because then you get warm fuzzy feet in your pocket. That'll be me uploading another video. Anyway. The only downside is I've got to go all the way over there now and turn the blooming thing off. I need a stick. Well, I've got to do it. I need a longer stick. What about a broom handle? Oh, I could just get up, couldn't I? All right, thank you for watching.